So some situations is harder than others when you don't have no help. Especially being a female truck driver out here, it is hard. I can't imagine how hard it is for you guys, especially being a single mother and you have no kind of help out here. You know, you 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 chose the career path so that you can make your family whole, right? This is the reason why you're doing the things that you're doing out here. But if you don't have no help from friends, family, and especially the baby's father, it just makes it a little bit more difficult than necessary. This What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. How many how many children's dads do you have? Just one? I got six, Kendra. I gave every man I love the baby. This post comes from the Facebook She Trucking Trucking Group. Shout out to the She Trucking Trucking Group. This says, hey, I need advice. I need some help. I was driving until I became too pregnant to drive anymore back in December. I was considered high risk. And now that my little baby is eight weeks, I don't know what to do. I am super independent as well as a single mother with zero friends, zero help and zero choice. But I do miss driving. It was my favorite job in the world. It never felt like a real job, and so I was happy to be doing it. But now I feel like my identity has been crushed into pieces. I would love to drive again, but I need someone or something or some body or some type of job to help me with my little guy. I'm kind of hoping that I will get a trucking job that would allow me to bring him with me. If not, I literally have no choice. She thought about going into dispatching. She knows everything about it and have resources on top brokers and connections. But she just don't have no connections with the carriers or drivers. She would love to do dispatching from home. If not, I would love to go back OTR. But with a kid and no help, I don't know how is that possible. My living situation is absolutely toxic, living with abusive family. So I need to work. I need to work quickly. I need to work now so that I can save up the money to get back home to Florida. I am currently stuck in Indiana, 30 minutes north of Indy. Any help or advice? would be helpful no more wasting time let's get it hold on so not being in your situation um i can only look at it from the outside you uh you have no help no friends and no choice in the matter now i know some drivers and some people is going to come after you and be like, well, you got a baby father. Where's he at? You know, prior to you being in a situation that you're in right now, you was happy, enjoying life until you ran up on the wrong guy. For some odd reason, that guy was able to get you to open your legs unprotected. That guy was able to, that guy was able to spew sweet nothings in your ear and made you open your legs. And then he got up in you, unprotected. He let it rip. You let it come in you. And a couple of weeks later, you got pregnant nine months later you had a baby which changed your whole world 
At first, you was out there enjoying life, making money, traveling the world, driving trucks. Then you ran up into this guy, and for whatever happened, things happened, and now you're left with a baby to take care of in a situation where you don't have no kind of help and you're not able to, you know, do what you need to do to get back where you was at. Now, I know a lot of drivers is going to say, hey, that's your fault. A lot of drivers is not going to be sympathetic with you. You know, a lot of drivers going to say you put yourself in that position. You know, but before you drivers start down talking this young lady, let's understand the fact that the baby's father, you know, is the catalyst of her situation. Now, it's unfortunate that she don't have no help. And the baby father is just left out there with no help. Maybe the maybe the baby's father was a truck driver. Maybe they had a one night fling. Maybe they got drunk. Maybe whatever the situation that caused her to open up her legs to this dude, it happened. They probably, as with all sexual encounters, you know, if you don't know if the woman can get pregnant or not, you will not know until after it happens and boom, you're pregnant. Sometimes at my age now, before you stick your thing up in there, you got to ask like, yo, um, are you able to get pregnant? I, I know that's like a mood killer. It is a mood killer. You know, the mood is right. The feeling is right. The kissing is right, the rubbing is right, the foreplay is right. And, you know, you being two grown, you know, grown people, you know, you just want to get down and, and, and do the damn thing. But the mood killer is, um, are you able to get pregnant? You got to think about that at your age, especially at my age. I got to think about that. <laughs> Are you able to get pregnant? Uh, I don't know. You know, my kids is grown. Uh, I don't know. It's not a, it's not a good answer. I don't know. Is is yeah yeah. So, I know that breaks the mood. If you had to get out and go and get some protection, you might have to do that. And then when you come back, everything you know, you gotta probably slow grind it back to where it was be when y'all was hot and heavy a lot of people don't think about that when when it's hot and heavy y'all get in it and be like oh just let me it's just let me just let me touch it and i'll pull out no the pull out don't work no more pull out at my age is not working no more i can't pull out i can't pull out. i gotta pull in i gotta pull in sorry you know, 53 years old, pulling out, you know, my, you know, sometimes the action is done. I mean, done and over with before you even, before you even say pull out. <laughs> but it's unfortunate that she's in a situation right now that the, the baby's father is nowhere to be found. And I don't understand that, fellas. I, you know, I understand you always down for a one night stand, but you gotta understand, bro. You gotta understand that consequences that comes after the after the do. You gotta be there. You gotta be there for. You gotta be there at least not for her, but for the baby. You know, but now here she is in the situation stuck in indiana with no help and with an eight week old baby now a lot of the people in the comment section saying oh yeah companies they'll they'll let you bring your baby on no no ma'am no sir 
companies, majority of the companies, 90% of the companies out here, your baby got to be a child, at least eight and up. Now, maybe if you go in to be a lease op with some companies, I know Prime, for example, because I know this one young lady that has two of her children, and I'm talking children, one of them is still a baby themselves with her. But you got to understand that the insurance with, with, with a baby, an infant baby on board, that could be a lot of stress added on to the stress that you already have while you're driving you know that could be a lot of distractions too a lot of small company is not going to let you bring an infant baby on the road with you considering that they need you to get that low on time or whatever the case sometimes you have to pull over and change the baby sometimes you got to pull over and feed the baby the baby is going to be the focal point of your time on the road see this is what people is not telling you they're not telling you they're trying to tell you yeah there's companies out here but when you get the baby on the road the baby is going to be the focal point when that baby's attention needs to be attentive you're going to either have to do one or two things you're going to have to pull over where you at or you're going to have to pull off and take some time to get that baby back it's going to be very irritating when the baby is on the truck with you and the baby is crying non-stop the baby wants to be fed remember baby wants to be fed baby wants to be burnt baby wants to be changed baby going to let you know when they need something and you on a mission to get this load at 12 o'clock in the morning one o'clock in the morning uh uh 12 o'clock in the evening 10 o'clock in the morning your company is going to inspect you to continue to do what you need to do and that's getting the product there on time and if the baby is going to be the focal point then the company is going to see that as a problem and they're going to have to let you go they have no choice they have no choice now female truck drivers mothers i know it's hard it's very hard it's easy if you have the help and it's much more easier that the baby's father is in the picture to help now for whatever reason that the baby's father is not in the picture i don't know I'm not going to touch on that but unfortunately the baby father was the one that put you in that position now when you probably found out that you was pregnant maybe you had options maybe but you took the higher route you decide to have the baby and now you're in the situation that you're in i'm just going to say that there's not many trucking companies that is taking or letting you bring infant babies on the truck with you only a handful maybe i don't know but i'm going to give you my prayers i'm going to give you my sentiments i'm hoping everything will work out for you in the future a lot of companies that i have called again don't allow babies on the truck regardless of their insurance uh maybe if you get with a company that has a lease op situation and then you probably might be able to bring your kid then but also when you do that just realize that you're gonna you you're gonna run into more issues it's gonna be a lot of issues i hope everything works out for you as far as being a dispatcher 
Uh, maybe you can uh, put your information out there. See if you can be a home dispatcher. Because there's some companies are looking for dispatchers that can dispatch from home. Uh, but again, like I said, you and your baby look cute. Uh, hopefully, the future will work out a lot better for you. Who is that DJ like?